Drivers of electric cars may soon use special green number plates to help them benefit from incentives such as cheaper parking and being able to drive in bus lanes. It's part of a group of plans which hope to boost electric car sales and help the government achieve its target of net zero emissions by 2050. Tom Burridge reports. Imagine you could zip out of this congestion into the red lane, just like a taxi or a bus. Well, under government plans, electric vehicle owners like Rod, Bristol particularly is a bit of a higgledy-piggledy mess, might in future be allowed to do exactly that. I think that would be a huge plus. That would probably half my commute time and would be a real incentive for me for driving a car like this. Green number plates, which could look something like these, would ministers believe make it easier for councils to introduce incentives like free parking, or access to the bus lanes. Driving in a bus lane wouldn't change my mind. Like I'd be up for just driving an electric car because it's better for the planet. But it seems a good idea if you can move a bit quickly through a city. There's too many cars on the road anyway, and I think if uh, a better incentive would be to make the buses cheaper. Ultimately, councils decide which incentives to introduce and where. The government hopes by making electrics more visible, it can drive change. We're pumping out the fumes from diesel and petrol that literally kill people. So we want to change that. One way to do that is to raise the awareness of what I think is a quiet revolution going on on our streets, which are more and more low and zero carbon cars. In Norway's capital, Oslo, electric cars are everywhere. Their number plates start with an E. Incentives such as free parking and open access to bus lanes have helped convert consumers there. The rest of the world, including the UK, is playing catch up. Electrics are still a fraction of all new vehicles bought in Britain today. Improving charging infrastructure is key, but the government hopes incentives like being able to drive in the bus lane could help us make the shift. But the upfront cost of an electric is a big barrier for many of us. A wider choice of more affordable models will be critical, so they can become mainstream on our streets. Tom Burridge, BBC News in Bristol. Thank you. James Houston and his wife Holly own an electric car and they say it has been a great purchase. And we can also talk to Toby Park, head of energy and sustainability at the Behavioural Insights team, sometimes known as the Nudge Unit, which works with the government to make simple changes to tackle major policy problems. The idea is when people see others doing something, they'll do it more themselves. So, James and uh, Holly, why did you buy an electric car? You, you, you obviously love it, do you? Well, you were pushing for one, weren't you? <laughs> sort of the new technology. Yeah, was, You're a bit of a tech. It was more the pro it was more the cost factor that was the overwhelming thing for us, um, because with electric cars nowadays, not everyone looks at the price to buy them, and for us, it was so much cheaper with leasing it to lease a car, and that's what we decided to do. So every month now, we're actually saving about two hundred pounds every month just from having an electric car and not having the big fuel bill. And, and what about the costs of buying it? Because there were incentives to to buy them initially, but they've actually gone away. Yeah, yeah. It, it's more from our personal point of view. It's more from a leasing it point of view. Um, it's just so much cheaper um, because originally with electric cars, um, there is that massive price to buy a car. Obviously, yeah. they are a lot more expensive than um, standard pe petrol cars. Um, but from our point of view, we were very cautious of it being such new technology. We didn't want to spend so much money on said new technology, so we thought leasing it would be a safer option because if anything was to go wrong, we can literally give it straight back to so the leasing company. So you're saving 200 pounds a month. Yeah, mm. that's yeah. amazing. That's savings. huge. Yeah, did great. you expect it to be that much of a saving? Um, well, initially we didn't, um, in the sense of obviously, you know, cars are expensive. You've got tax, you've got insurance, etc. On top mm. of the purchase price. Um, but I mean, we've also had solar panels put on our property as well, which again has helped massively. But just the fact that hang on, so, so, are you in, so what's included in that saving? What's covered? So included in that saving, so um, obviously we can charge up um, at certain locations at no cost. Yeah. Um, for example, um, we use a local shopping centre really often, um, and it costs us nothing to charge the vehicle. Um, whereas obviously, if we were driving a fuel car, you would be looking sort of you know fifty pounds plus to obviously fill that car back up again which yeah. is just yeah. basically burning money at the end of the day for us personally it works really well because personally we never really even charge at home now but like we had the charger put in by the ev company when we bought it but we hardly ever actually charge at home and that's that's the big sort of unsung story of evs why, why is that because supermarkets have chargers 
Um, and so now when we do so our food shop... So if you charge shop, at home, it increases your electricity bill. Exactly. But so when you go to a supermarket and you charge at a supermarket, it doesn't cost you a penny. What about range anxiety? That's something that people talk about. You can't charge it to it was go a, far It was our first big caution. Um, but my sister, for example, she lives in Exeter. So we quite often pop down there and we can pop into Holly's family in Wales. Um, and it's never been a problem because we've got two young children ourselves um, and they take about 40 to 50 minutes to... Um, well, recharge effectively to have their food and to be sorted out in the service stations. <laughs> so recharge the, car, the kids and the exactly. car at the kids same the time. Exactly. exactly. So <laughs> the car, we always come out and the car's actually finished fully charging long before we're finished. So yeah, that's working for you. Thank you yeah. very much. Let's talk more about um, that uh, nudge unit that I mentioned. I can talk now to Toby. Um, so. Toby Park, the, tell us what the idea is behind the, the green number plates that are being discussed. It's done in Canada. The idea is put them on the, the electric cars and it means other people will be able to see actually how many of them are out there and might encourage others. Exactly right. So there is quite a good news story out there. The number of people buying electric cars is increasing quite rapidly, admittedly from a fairly low baseline. So numbers are still quite small at the moment. But it is more or less doubling year on year. So we want to get that out there because people don't always realise that electric cars often look more or less the same to petrol and diesel cars. So we want to communicate that message. And the, and the sort of nugget of behavioural science behind this is this idea of what we call social proof. So imagine you're looking for a restaurant to eat in and you find a couple of restaurants, the menus are quite similar. Let's say one of them is packed with happy punters, the other one has one or two people in it. Which do you go for? You go for the one that other people are enjoying. It's a sort of indication that it's a, a good option. Um, and we can use the same kind of process of influence when it comes to vehicle purchasing. So simply making them more salient, making them more noticeable on the road. You're going to be driving down the road, an average journey on the motorway, you're going to see quite a few of these cars with little green dots or green number plates on. And you're going to start to think, oh, actually, you know, people are buying these. It's quite normal. And we do know that that does influence our behaviour. How much does it influence, though, Big? I mean, you, you gave the analogy of a restaurant that's popular. You know, that's, that's an occasional thing that people might do. But your car, when it comes down to it, it's got to be cost efficient and it's got to be reliable. Absolutely, you're right. I mean, it is, it's a sort of soft nudge on the margins. It's not going to get us all buying electric cars overnight. Um, obviously, we will need additional policies that sort of boost charging infrastructure, address the sort of upfront cost issue and so on. But we think it's worthwhile. And of course, it's also a platform which, which we can build on. So it's not just about that sort of social proof element. It's also, as we've heard earlier in the excerpts, an opportunity to build incentives into this. And that could potentially be more of a game changer. So if you can use uh, the toll roads free, for example, if you get parking um, benefits in, in local authorities, car parks and so on, that could be quite a bit more impactful. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like something that's being talked up really well by the government. And I don't say that in a critical fashion, but I mean, obviously, it's, it's kind of a bit of a win-win, isn't it, for the government? Because it doesn't cost the government anything. Number plates changing colour councils getting less revenue because of parking costs what about what the government should be doing to encourage infrastructure and to actually give financial incentives for people to to get these cars absolutely and so we've heard as well that uh, funding for charging infrastructure has uh, been doubles i believe um, but obviously that's the first step we need much more charging infrastructure we need to also address this issue of upfront costs as we've just heard uh, electric vehicles are generally more expensive up front and actually that's a bit of a problem as well from a behavioural perspective because even though they can be quite money saving in the long term because they are a lot cheaper to run we do tend to focus on that sort of upfront cost so we need to address that so you know potentially there are mechanisms that can solve that maybe things like sort of pay as you save type interest free loans where you get a loan to cover the difference that you then pay back through your, your running cost savings uh, maybe local authorities could help you know, bring together interested community members to agree some kind of collective purchase agreement, for example, you know, buy 100 electric vehicles at once, get a big discount, that sort of thing. So I'm not saying we don't need those slightly stronger policy measures to address the cost issues, to address the range anxiety, the charging infrastructure and so on, but we've got to start somewhere. And actually, you know, in the world we're in, where we've committed to net zero emissions, we need to start transi transitioning to electric vehicles. And we think this is a pretty good first step just to sort of raise awareness and, and get people thinking about this. Toby Park, thank you very much. Thank you.